about to get these brand new tires dirty. What we're looking at today is the ECX AMP MT. You'll notice the one on the right side has no motor or motor mount or transmission mount at all. And the one on the left is the fully complete unit. Um, they were all recently run in the snow. And during that run, we noticed the one on the right side with the red rims was making some really bad clicking noises and we thought it was just the spur gear because we've had issues where the spur gear goes bad, you break a tooth or something, and you know it makes this noise. So we thought that was the issue. Turns out it wasn't, and we'll get into that in details in a minute. But since I already dismantled the one on the right, I'm going to use the one on the left, and I'll show you how to take off that motor assembly. The first thing you need to do is remove your motor, and the easiest thing to do is just unplug your motor wires. Now, obviously this is a brushless upgrade, so there's the three. If you still have the brush motor, it'll just be two wires. So you just unplug those from your ESC. Then, so the first thing you wanna do is remove your wheel, get the wheel off so you have easier access to the cover. So this is your motor and gear cover. There's three screws you need to take off. You got this one here, this one here, and this one here. That removes this cover, which exposes the motor. To remove the whole assembly, the motor, the transmission housing and everything, it's very simple. This is your, your bumper piece, so remove these two screws, and then you remove these two screws up here. This is what holds the transmission assembly to the body. Underneath there's four screws, although this one's missing one, but it would be this screw, this screw, and then the two in, again, that's basically the bumper. So four screws on the bottom, that's what holds the whole transmission assembly in. Now, before you take it completely off, there's two more little tiny screws you need to get to. That little screw holds your axle assembly to the shaft that's connected to your transmission gear. A little screw in here. Now, if you rotate this, you'll see on the other side where the pin comes through, so this is the back side of that screw. So it basically just goes all the way through. And then on this side, again, you can see that's the back side of the screw. So turn it around until you can see it's a hex key or a hex wrench. So you need your little hex wrench tool to get that out. So take those off, push the axles out of the way, and then this whole assembly comes off. So again, you can see here, the whole thing is off. My motor, I just it's just sitting inside the body so I don't lose it. Then, once we've got that apart, it's a matter of dismantling this whole assembly. I've got my bag of parts. Some of it is salvageable, some of it is not. And most of the parts in here will have to be replaced. These are basically the only components left that I was able to salvage that I don't have to buy new that goes inside the transmission. This is actually holds one of the gears internally. This post actually goes through one of the other gears inside and then comes out and then your slipper clutch and plate go on here. And this is a spacer that also goes inside. 
There's a little pin in there. You can't lose that little pin either. So I clean these up. We're gonna save these. I don't have to buy these new. And when it goes back together, I'll show you where that all goes. Inside the bag, we have cover. We gotta take that off to expose the screws for the motor. Obviously the motor came out. And actually this, I love this. This I haven't found anywhere else for a long time. So when the motor is mounted through here, this plate goes here and then it actually holds it in tighter so you're not just screwing onto the plastic. This is the whole gear assembly again. So this whole unit sat back here, like this piece sat back here. So again, the, there are two screws going through that gray piece, the bumper piece, that's these two. These two screwed into the body up here. And then there's the four screws that go in through the bottom. So I just kept everything in place so I wouldn't lose anything. So we can save our bumper cover. We're saving our gear cover. I'll save the screws, but otherwise this whole piece is bad. Uh, as you can see, there is a bearing in here that you can really see. Somehow we melted the plastic. It's actually cracked. There's a couple cracks in here, uh, but I'm replacing this. Basically this whole thing. Spur gear doesn't look too bad. And I think the teeth are okay, but I'm just gonna replace it anyway since I'm in here. So we got a new spur gear coming. This mess is the slipper clutch. So these are basically your slipper pads that go onto your spur gear. But you can see how worn these are. I mean, they're just completely destroyed. And then these plates go on to hold everything in place. When I put it all back together, you'll see clear how it goes. New slipper assembly with the spring, the nut, new slipper pads, the plates new spur gear. This is one piece of the metal gear. I think the bearings are okay, but the metal gear set comes with bearings already attached, in which case I'm just gonna keep those on the new one and get rid of these. In order to get the piece that got destroyed, you have to buy the whole metal gear assembly. Which brings us to the pieces that got destroyed. This piece looks okay. Somehow I, this one avoided getting destroyed, but the other one here, you can see has been destroyed. I mean, there are entire sets of teeth missing. So that's what all the noise was we were hearing. So the metal transmission kit comes with both of these little gears and of course the actual transmission. So the motor mount transmission assembly, there's four screws on the back that hold it together, which are basically all unscrewed here. You can actually see in here little bits of metal shavings. So those are the teeth, pieces of the teeth embedded into the plastic It made a nice mess. That's why we're just gonna replace this whole piece. Get new, start clean. I've got all my parts now so I can rebuild the transmission. I have the transmission case set, the new metal gear set, the spur gear, the slipper assembly, and the ball bearings. Now these aren't the ECX ball bearings. These are ones I got from Apex products. They're the same size as the ECX. They're just bearings I had from something else I had to fix. And then we've got our parts that we saved out of the transmission before. First thing I'll do is I'll, or I'll put the transmission case back together. Or if you're just replacing the transmission gear with the metal gear set, I'll show you that part. We're going to start with the half of the transmission case that the motor mounts into and the spur gear sits in here. So to put this back together, we've got our pin that came out of the other transmission. This fits in here, it's kind of snug. Make sure that's pressed in all the way. So first thing we need to do is put the bearings into the one gear. So we're just going to press fit the bearings. Just gotta make sure you get them lined up right, one on each side. And this gear with the bearings fits right over that pin we just put in. So that's the first one. The other gear that has the little slot cut out, that's for the spur gear pin. And you gotta have that little holder pin in. That just pushes right into it's a little snug, but it does slide in. Get that pin lined up, and there we go. So 
this guy will go into here after we put in our spacer and our bearings. Again, on the plastic housing where the spur gear goes, you press a bearing in from this side and just presses into the center here. So that side is in. In the other side of the transmission case, you put put another bearing into this little pocket. And that's where this is gonna ride on the back. So on this, there's this spacer that goes in here. Put the spacer in, and a bearing goes over that, into that hole. And this piece goes through there. Line up the gears. Press to make sure the bearing is seated all the way. Those two gears are nice and meshed. Everything is sitting correctly. On this side, this bearing goes over this shaft because the whole shaft rotates. And then there's a little pocket that this pin goes in because the pin is stationary and just the gear rotates. Then when you put in the metal transmission, when you're holding onto that piece, your metal transmission goes with the screws facing you. Line up your gears and that's it. Now you probably want to grease these. Notice that there are bearings already on the metal transmission. So you got to make sure you press that together in order to seat the bearing into, in this case, the recess on this side. And then it's just a matter of putting it together and then that's essentially it. Then you screw it back together and uh, your metal gear is now in place. If you were only replacing your plastic stock gear set, which is this, then all you would have to do, you wouldn't have to seat all your bearings. You would just pull those components out. Again, the whole transmission comes out. This gear comes out, so this gear is this gear, and this plastic gear with the little notch in it is this one, and of course, you know, the whole plastic transmission just pulls out. So you would have to put the bearings into the metal gear like I did, you know, just pull them out of the plastic one, and then just like with this one, you pull the pin out and then you know, out of the plastic one and then put it into the metal one. And then you're basically done. You put it back together and you're good to go. Inside the plastic gear transmission are actually metal bevel gears. So I did have to actually replace one of the plastic gears. I had to buy the whole transmission plastic gear set, which is this. You can see, you know, these are metal. They're probably, I'm assuming they're steel. And that's actually what's inside of here. So what you're getting with the metal gear set is the gear on the body now, instead of being plastic is metal. And then of course, these two are also metal. And since we upgraded to brushless, we destroyed all of our plastic ones. So that's why we upgraded to the metal. So the next thing we'll do to get everything ready is we'll get the, the slipper assembly put together on here. So we take our slipper pads, peel off the adhesive backing, and then just line up our shapes and press it into place. And that's our slipper pad. One on both sides. Again, just get that lined up pretty close. Press that together. Then we take the metal pieces from the slipper assembly. So before we put the slipper assembly and spur gear back on, we'll screw this guy together, which of course I kept the screws from the other housing that we took apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in now. There are three screws of the same length and one longer one. The one long one goes into this part. So it's this top hole here. So that's where the long one's gonna go. The short ones, there's one that goes here. 
one that goes here, and one that goes down here. So let's get those screwed in. Remember it's plastic, so you don't want to over tighten it. I'm just going to work my way around them. So now that they're almost all tight, I'm just going to go around and tighten them up one by one. Kind of work my way around them again, just to don't want to strip anything or make anything too tight or too loose. And then we're going to take this guy, just grab that, rotate it, make sure nothing is grinding. It's not too tight. Okay, so now we're going to put our spur gear back on. There's a little tiny spacer washer that goes on first. And then our spur gear plates. So line up our plate. Spur gear with the pad, slipper pads on. One more plate. Again, with the, with the cutout in the plate, you just got to get it lined up with the flat spot on the shaft there. So let's rotate it around. So that's on. And then we put our spring and then the nut. Now we're not going to tighten this down all the way. We'll do all that after we get the motor mounted. That is now our rebuilt transmission with the metal gear set. So now I'm ready to mount the motor. Uh, you might notice I actually had to turn the pinion gear around. The teeth line up even nicer. So then the next thing we got to do is line up two of the screw holes with this hole and that slot. So this is going to sit in the car this way and I want the wires you know, aiming towards the inside of the car. So I need to find set of holes so right about there now normally you would have a little washer and a screw that goes into each but with this nifty metal mount this actually does the same thing but it gives us a much sturdier mount a lot of it's just by feel to find that hole I'm going to leave these loose because then we're going to rotate the motor ever so slightly until it makes contact. When you align your spur gear and your pinion gear, you don't want them wedged in there super tight. You also don't want it super loose. Or, you know, that's not a good mesh. That's too tight. So you want something a little bit in between there. The easiest way to get your gear mesh right is take a piece of paper, put your piece of paper in between your spur gear and your pinion gear, and then line them up. Rotate it a little bit. Then, while holding that together relatively tight, I'm going to tighten down the motor screws. So then we just drive that out. I'm happy with that gear mesh. One other piece that came with the transmission housing was this little piece here, which is this. I didn't replace it. This piece is perfectly fine, but if I ever need to, I have a spare piece. So then we're going to put this in, get everything lined up again, and then get this mounted. Everything is in, it's seated. The pan head screws go in the top. Flathead screws go on the bottom. Get them lined up close. They don't have to be perfect. So I get these two in first because then the bumper goes on here. So the bumper we saved before. Make sure everything is lined up. So you take your four flathead screws and that screws into the bottom of the transmission housing. Remember, don't go too tight. It is just plastic. Back up to the top. We take our last two pan heads you screw into the top of the transmission housing. And then the last thing we'll do is these guys on. There's the through hole in the transmission shaft, the little screws in here. I'm gonna take those out, line the holes up, and then put that back in. Okay, so I got that in. You gotta do a blind so it can be a little tough. Pin, 
as you come all the way through and the other side the head is just below the surface so that should be about where it sits then i gotta do the other one all right that's together and since we're back here we're just gonna plug the wires in so that part's done now we can tighten the slipper so when you try to turn this everything's going to move so you got to hold on to the spur gear as best you can you want that nut so it's a good starting point so you can see here there's just a little bit of there's only a thread or two poking past the end of the nut and that's where you start so at that point now you can put your other wheel on adjust your slipper tension and make sure everything is working properly let's see if we fix the transmission 